everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake and this is Dude Ranch DIY. Today we are still up here at the Rugged Maid Ranch and I'm here with Jared from Rugged Maid. And uh, as you can see, we have the four-way wedge, the six-way wedge, and the good old-fashioned two-way or single blade on the RS737. So we're gonna be doing a little uh, comparison video here, just talking about when each uh, wedge style is appropriate for the type of wood and size of wood that we're gonna be splitting. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of talking, then we're gonna fire up the machine and show some good examples. Yeah, let's, let's get into it. All right. So Jake, it's great to have you here. Uh, I know we've been having a lot of fun. We've made a few other videos. Hopefully our viewers are, are gonna see those other ones as well. Yeah. Um, one of the topics that we've covered in, in a past video is you know how to operate your splitter, kind of just uh, you know splitting 101. Um, today, we wanted to tackle a question where we dig a little deeper into operating your splitter, uh, which is if your splitter has options of splitting with, you know, here we've just got your straight standard blade. You know, every splitter is going to have at least this, regardless of the make or model. Um, a lot of splitters nowadays need to come with a four-way of some kind. Right. Uh, here we've got a slip-on example that goes to our 700 series. Our 500 series has, you know, the bolt-on wings that, again, that is in one of our other videos where we get all the splitters lined up together. That's a great one. Um, and then we also have the holy grail, the six-way blade. Um, so wanted to you know kind of pick your brains and, and you know kind of help our audience get a better sense of you know when does the four way make sense when do you need to take that off and just split with the straight blade and when can you get away with the six way and get you know that high productivity get all those pieces in one pass so, right you know what's been your experience um, so I mean me myself having this machine or a machine pretty similar to it I do have all three of these options and I got to say they're all great um, I'd say I. Out of all three, I use the four-way hands down the most, mm -hmm. um, and that's probably followed by pretty equally the six-way and the single-way wedge. The single-way and the six-way are pretty unique in that they have a very specific purpose, mm. I find, for the type of wood that I do and the type of splitting that I do. Um, the four-way is kind of like your bread and butter. Most things can go through it. I'd say about 90% of things can go through it, and about 10% of all the wood I split I use for that six way hmm. or that single way wedge. Um, the, the times I find myself using the single way is really when I have a really big round. I, granted, I do tree work, so I'm bringing home a lot of the wood that I from trees that I take down. Okay. So I have large trunks of trees, sometimes hmm. getting up to 40 inches in diameter. When the wood's and, free, you can't always be picky. <laughs> right, exactly. So I find because I'm, I'm also not um, always splitting with a second person, hmm. that when I'm by myself and I have one of those big rounds, the log lift is a great asset to have. You can get that big round up onto the splitter. Yeah. But when you're by yourself, although a lot of the time the machine has the power to push through it, or push it through using the four-way wedge, it's kind of hard to manage four really big quarters of wood hmm. being by myself, because one wants to go that way, one wants to go this way, and I can't be in two places at once. Yeah, so that's when, right, so that's when I like to use that single-way wedge, because although it's gonna take two more cycles to get it into four pieces, it's a lot more manageable. Hmm. You don't have pieces falling over. You don't have to go back and get them. Um, you're just dealing with two pieces, which can pretty easily be pushed onto your catch tray here. Yeah, it's a little counterintuitive that sometimes going back to the, the straight blade is more efficient. Right, because there's, le you know, if you do that four way and you're trying to be a hero, sometimes those pieces go all over the place. And even, you know, if it is in four pieces, that's still a pretty sizable chunk of wood to have to get back onto the splitter. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of my take on the, the single way wedge there. So it sounds like these are you know, really different tools in the toolbox. You got to pull out the right tool depending on the situation. So let's go, let's talk a little more about what, you know, how do you determine when you're going to use which one? We've got, you know, a, a few different logs here, uh, obviously the same style of wood, but I, I think type of wood um, is, is one factor and, and size is another. Um, so tell us a little about how you would make that decision based on, all right, here are the logs I'm going to split today, or even within one one session of splitting you might be dealing with totally different kinds of logs right different you know for different batches different trees different you know so what, what are the factors i think some other factors are definitely like you said species of wood mm. um, everybody knows that oak splits for the most part really nice it, it pops open similar to ash maple can be a little bit iffy here and there 
Um, elm is definitely a really stringy mm. type of wood, as is hickory. But all species of wood, no matter you know if it's oak or hickory or elm, it's um, you're going to be dealing with knots a lot of the time. Not everybody gets perfect firewood poles out of the forest. Um, so if you're dealing with knots and they're sizable knots, a lot of time it's going to be easier and you're going to get nicer end product of wood if you're not using the six way and sometimes not even using the four way, but just using that single way wedge because you can really cater and turn the piece of wood to avoid going through that knot, which mm -hmm. makes it easier on the machine. And at the end of the day, you're going to get a nicer, more uniform split than you know a piece where you're trying to go right through that knot. Well, we've got some wood to split. Why don't we fire up the machine and see what happens when we you know, maybe match up the right kind of log to the right kind of blade and when we match up maybe too much log for a given blades. All right, sounds good. Let's do it. So why don't we start with the four-way? It's pretty much industry standard these days. Every, every machine seems to come with a four-way. And uh, just a moment ago, you said that most of your splitting is able to be done with the four-way. Yeah, I use the four-way all the time. Um, I think it is really suited for all size you know pieces of wood um, even getting down to your final size splits um, i really like it because you can make really uniform size pieces of wood um, and that's important to me as i, I sell firewood yeah. um, so if you have a stove or a fireplace that only takes you know certain size pieces or you find it's easier to get you know uniform square pieces or triangle pieces into your you know, small insert or, or wood stove. Um, the four-way is really good for that. And you also have the benefit of, you know, taking a full-size round and busting it into four smaller pieces in one push as opposed to the single-way wedge. So uh, the four-way is found on my machine most of the time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a real time saver. All right, so why don't you pick a log that you think is kind of the, you know, the to suit, you know, ideal size for four-way, kind of, you know, maybe on the bigger side that it can split. Yeah, I mean, so I like to use it, honestly, for some of these bigger pieces. Um, the only downfall is, is that sometimes it can be split, you know, into four pieces and it's hard to manage. But I think with the two of us here, once that bigger piece is, is split, we can each kind of grab a side yeah. and uh, put it back onto the log lift and make some really nice firewood. All right. So a good thing with the four-way is that we just busted up that big round into four pieces. It's nice having you to, to catch it, yeah. but now that the pieces are a little bit more manageable, this piece doesn't really need to be split into four, so if you orient it horizontally, it's going to glide right under those four-way wings and just be split into two and make a nice uniform piece of wood. Now, to get a log down to the size this will be after this next pass, is that for the firewood that you sell, or would it be the same for a firewood that you're going to burn yourself? Um, generally, because I'm burning in a wood stove, I don't mind to have slightly larger pieces, but I uh, you know, gear my firewood for selling to typically be smaller, one, because it dries faster, and two, I want everybody to be able to handle it. So a piece this size, although it is a little bit big, I would put this in my stove, but I'd like everybody to be able to pick up my firewood with one hand and easily be able to you know, maneuver it and load it into a basket or a wheelbarrow.
So once you've gotten a log that size broken down, I mean, these pieces are pretty much ready to you know, burn or sell, uh, but we still have that first half. Um, would you ever swap out the blade if you, you know, run in a machine that had that option? Absolutely. So in, once we popped this open, it, uh, or before we popped it open, I should say, it wasn't apparent that there was a, a yeah. big knot in there. So if we show everybody, that is a pretty gnarly crotch. Um, you can see here where it split into two and then came back into one. There was even another little knot over here. So that would be a good candidate, at least in my mind, to pop off the four-way, which is, is pretty easily done once we get this wood out of here. And if we're going for uniform size pieces and consistent size pieces and neat pieces that aren't all you know mangled up, I think the single-way wedge would be a great candidate to bust that in half and then we can put back on the four-way. Okay, yeah, let's try that. So I noticed after you had took the four-way off, broke that down into smaller pieces, you went right back to the four-way. Yeah. Yeah, it, so once you split that big piece right down the middle, because you have the single wedge there, it's easy to line up the center line of that knot with the tip of the blade, and then it basically just split it into two perfect pieces, and you know, you're, you're able to avoid a lot of that knot. Then once you send this through the four-way, you're left with this knot if you orient it properly you can basically get this knot to the left of the wedge and up above this wing so you're you're isolating that knot to basically one piece of wood so yeah. although this wood is a little bit stringy um, you can maximize the amount of clean wood that you're able to produce while minimizing um, you know your really gnarly pieces yeah well we had split some of this wood before you came so we knew this was you know stringy and had some knots so i mean we weren't trying to you know make it look easy by getting some perfect straight grain stuff I no mean, by is, no means this is uh this is real it, yeah definitely a, a real piece and and real knots that uh you know aren't the easiest to split but this machine makes it a hell of a lot easier yeah but it's interesting how once it was split open and you can get your eyes on the grain then you have a little more control over where, right. you, where you line up the blade and where i'm when i'm splitting i like to always keep the knots facing up that way i can see the orientation and you can kind of you know isolate it to a quarter or a half you know depending on which wedge you're you're using to um you know just isolate that knot to like one sector so to speak Okay, so we can finish off this log and then what should we do next? Maybe find a piece that you think is a, a good candidate for the six-way? Yeah, we got a couple pieces over here that would be great candidates. Uh, Something like when, this? When you're using the, the six-way, I think diameter is, is the biggest factor um, because if you try and use too big of a piece, it's, you're, you're left with six really big pieces and um, you know, you're then going to have to go back and, and split them again. Um, and, and the six-way really isn't the best at that because of all the, the blades going everywhere. Um, so I find if you have nice uniform uh, you know, diameter pieces, you can send it through once, one and done. All right. Well, you think this is a good one? I think that is. All right. All right. Well, let's... That looked like it split pretty nicely. That split nice and easy, and you're, you're left with some pretty uniform pieces. What typically happens, I find, when you're using a six-way with a with a round that's too big, is that the the round sits higher up above the six-way. So these two pieces on the top, and sometimes even on the sides, if it's big enough, are going to be significantly larger than your two pieces on the bottom. Hmm. And in this case, here's a piece coming off the top, and here's a piece coming off the bottom. And although the one on the top is a little bit larger, it's not so much larger that it's, you know, 
unburnable or, you know, it's a problem, yeah. in other words. I mean, it's, so, not a, it's not a precise science. Right, but exactly. That, that so, was like, you know, we're not going for absolutely perfect, but, you know, the, the six-way has its place, and when you have that perfect diameter, it makes things move a lot quicker. Yeah. Well, I thought that was an interesting point you made about you want the customer to be able to just grab each piece with one hand and just, you know, stack their wood or stoke their furnace. Um, that, that's really interesting. Absolutely. Uh, let's grab another one. I think we've okay. got a couple more here that maybe will split just as well, and then, and then we'll maybe try one that won't split so well. So as you can see, it even splits elm uh, with relative ease when it's nice straight grain and uh, a decent size. Yeah. So it's the elm is, is definitely showing its stringiness here, but um, still a little you know, bit green too. Yeah, it's definitely wet on the inside, but for the most part, we have some pretty nice uniform pieces, and uh, you know the, the six way shines w when you have that right diameter. I, th I really think that's the key. Yeah. All right, so we've seen two different logs, you know, two different styles of wood that both split, but they had a similar diameter. Right. Um, should we tackle one of these monsters and see what happens when we you can, we can, get, get too ambitious? Let's take one of the big ones and, and we can show, uh, you know, what the six-way does to a big piece of wood. Yeah. That's, that's just so pretty much, <laughs> too much as resistance. I think we both thought it's, uh, it's just too much friction there yeah um, and not to mention as you can see this is a great example of how these pieces on the bottom are going to be your nice uniform then you got these middle pieces which are going to be small or a little bit larger than these um, but smaller than the top and these tops you know they could be whole logs just themselves so it begs the question why not just go with the straight blade break this into quarters right and then go with a four-way or six-way at that point and Absolutely. get your nice uniform pieces and um, and you know just yeah when you're when you're dealing with rounds this size I really think the single way is the best way to do it you quarter it up using the single um, if you go ahead and try and use the four-way you're still gonna be left with that issue that your two bottom quarters are gonna be significantly smaller than these larger ones and these larger ones might be too much for some people to handle yeah um, and you know, even if you are able to lift it and move it around, why stress yourself out? Take the little extra time, use that single way wedge, and I think uh, in the end, the machine's gonna be happier, your wood's gonna be more uniform, and it's gonna be easier. Yeah, and not only are we not able to split this with the six way on there, but we pretty much have a situation now where it's kind of jammed on there. Right, Let's see it's, how hard uh, it is. you know, it's pretty well on there, so I think this might be a case for yeah. the old sledgehammer. Yeah, this is, this is not, what you want to set yourself up for. <laughs> there we go. So if we slip this off, I think we can Yeah, now let's see what happens. Bust this down pretty easily. So I saw you went right back to the four-way once you had it quartered. Yeah, so that's the beauty of you know these wedges, just slip it on and off, is that you can go right from that single to the four-way, and once you have it you know quartered up into what I'd say are pretty identical size um, quarters, you can throw back on that four-way and it'll make nice size firewood pretty consistently. Yeah, and I think you have a lot of flexibility over just how small you want to go. Right, and uh, so everybody I mean, has unique, you know, standards and yeah. sizes that they want if they're selling if they're using it for themselves is it for a bonfire is it for an indoor 
furnace. Exactly, and how fast do you want it to dry? Yeah. Or do you need it to dry, in other words? Um, so is there anything else we should try here? Uh, we've split you know, a pretty big Mama Jama log, and uh, the, the two-way sliced right through it, no problem. Absolutely. And then once it was corded, the four-way handled it, and uh, we've seen where the six-way comes into its own and where mm -hmm. it really just doesn't make sense. Right. Yeah. There is no one-size-fits-all when it comes to these blades. No, there isn't, which is why they're so easily interchangeable and why, you know, if you have a machine of this size, it's, uh, it's nice to be able to have both single, four, and six-way. Yeah. Well, it's great to get the input from someone who, you know, really knows their way around splitting and, uh, and what you know as a, as a tree expert about the wood itself and the way the grain works and how it dries. And it, that's uh, really interesting. I hope our viewers have enjoyed this. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much going to wrap up this video here. Um, thanks for the help, Jared. I think this was a really good representation of different scenarios and size wood species and everything of when to use the single four and six way wedge. And clearly we weren't babying this RS737 here because uh, we had some pretty Mondo pieces of elm. We can both uh, smell it. And I think you should be able to see it by uh, based on all this stringy mess that we got here. This is supposed to all be pine. I don't know what happened. Yeah, but... <laughs> definitely wasn't pine. But uh, you know, the, the rug and made splitter powered right through it. Um, as you've seen on my channel for a long time now. Um, so thanks for having us up here. I think this has uh, been really fun and hopefully help some of you guys out when you're trying to determine what wedge to use for what uh, species and size of wood. So as always guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, if you like the channel, give it a big thumbs up, click all the buttons, questions, comments, throw it down in the comment section below. Head over to the Rugged Made YouTube channel to check out a bunch more how-to videos and stuff like that. And uh, for now, I'm Jake. I'm Jared. This is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next time.